Hey guys, um, I wanted to do, I guess, one final review of the Sea Eagle SDS-10. Um, this is the third time I've had this boat out, and uh, the last time the waters were really calm, and this time the water's a little more choppy, and uh, I also want to go over a couple of uh, upgrades that I've done to the boat or changes that um, others may wish to do. So I'm out on the same lake here in Indiana, I've been doing some fishing and camping. Um, one of the things that uh, we did this time that we didn't do last time is that we kind of wanted to go to like more of an open body of water and go to like some more popular campsites. So with that being said, I was very concerned about the um, the wind and the boat going through the wind. And um, so I want to go over a couple of things that I, that I kind of did to change that. I actually put two, two trolling motors on this boat for primary propulsion. And I link them together with uh, I got that from Tractor Supply. It's just a little turnbuckle. Now, what I in initially ended up doing was I ended up putting the motors here and here, as pretty much as close together as I could. And then I realized that th there seemed to be just a lot of fighting. They were, I think they were just fighting each other, the turbulence or something. So then I spread the motors apart a little bit, and they seem to be doing a lot better. I think eventually I want to actually put them even further apart on the on my modified uh, motor mount and then I'll have to just get another turnbuckle because this one won't be long enough but basically what I did was I just used the original um, motor mount and then I put a piece of angle aluminum on the bottom and uh, I just put a couple two by fours on the bottom to keep it to, you know from twisting and then I was still under my weight class of 45 pounds with the motor mount but I just feel like I was kind of close to that and just to prevent stress on the hull, I just I added this ratchet strap, and I just have this strap to my seat base. So basically, what's happening is it's the the load of the of the motor mount is now directly attached to the, basically the floor structure of the boat, so it's a lot more stable. And there's less flexing when the motors kick, and you get more torque. The boat is significantly faster, significantly faster. It's pretty quick it's probably almost you know close to the equivalent of one horsepower but what I ended up doing because I knew I was going to consume more energy was I always had this one it's a 27 size marine battery in the Minn Kota trolling motor box I think I showed you guys in that last video but I also added another Minn Kota um, this is a 31 I ended up buying and uh what did I end up doing was I wanted to I want I didn't want it to switch out batteries and be drawing like 60 amps of power out of one battery, so I ended up using uh, I made uh, I bought these like they're jumper cables basically 10 gauge, and I just put new terminal ends on them, and I lost this wing nut in the lake, so I'm to, hopefully they can ship me another one. But anyway, I just ran this cord, and then it attached to the battery, so I'm running the batteries in parallel. So, theoretically, I, you know, I should have a couple hundred amp hours of, of uh, capacity. And when we first came out here, um, we came out from that way, and we're, we're camping over there, and the, uh, the wind was out of the east, and it was, it was a little odd, but anyway, it was a lot of headwind, and I, I really had to pull these motors hard to get, it, to, get, to get us out here. I don't think you would have been able to do it just by worrying. So this is, that's kind of a heads up, guys. If, if you're going to be taking if you're going to be taking this boat out on open water and it's going to be any more than like eight nine mile an hour winds, if you're going to need you're going to need more than just a, a Minn Kota 30. You're, you're going to need something more than that, and definitely you're not going to be able to oar it out of there. And something else that that I've learned is that the more weight you put in this boat, the significantly harder it is to uh, to move. Most of the time, it was just me and like a backpack. But lately, um, or on this trip, I I had to haul this other guy's gear, and he he came in in a canoe, and uh, that was pretty rough. I was I was close to capacity, and it was it was very difficult. It took a lot of energy to move this boat. And on that note, when when you when you're out here for three or four days, like we are. These lead acid batteries just do not do well with being discharged or, you know, moderately discharged and then just left to sit without charging. Because I've, I've already noticed that um, in my one or two day camp trips, I, I had pretty much full, 
capabilities out of my batteries, but this one, I really haven't hardly used the boat too much since we got here, and I've already noticed a significant depletion of my batteries. So I think really to kind of complete this, um, to kind of complete this uh, setup here, I think I'm, re I'm really going to need to get a solar panel, and um, I'm probably going to take the fabric off the canopy top and try to modify the canopy top for some solar panels. So I guess uh, I wanted to share that tidbit with you and uh, still love the boat. It's an amazing boat. It's absolutely wonderful. It's um, a fishing machine. It really is. It's, it's amazing. So quiet and um, it can really haul a lot of gear. I mean, I, I guess I can attest to that. I probably had like eight, 900 pounds of gear in this boat and um, it was, not a problem. It was not. A, it's not a problem for this boat as long as you have a little bit of power to push it. It's not an issue. But anyway, um, send me some questions or uh, thoughts on this boat, and I'll try to answer the best I can. I mean, I I don't have tons of experience with it, but I've had it out now I think three times, and I'll probably take it out one one other quick time this year. And anyway, um, 